Hello, this is Kim Nelson with the Jewelry Design Department at FIT. Uh, another video here in a series of videos for modeling jewelry in Rhino, uh, continuing along with the floral brooch project. Um, this is where we left off. Uh, there are some issues here. I expect there to be issues aplenty as we go through this. The purpose of modeling or maquetting like this, sketching like this, is to ensure the two things that you really want the most when you're doing a complicated piece. Um, and the two things are largely at odds with each other, so it's a challenge to do. Uh, you want to have predictability. You want to be able to predict what's going to happen next as you're modeling. That gives you some assurance that your piece is going to work out because you do not want to spend hours and hours and hours on something to find out that you're off in the wrong direction. Uh, the other thing you want is flexibility, to be able to change your mind and, and revise things as you go. And this method allows both of those things. Now, for example, this leaf form, the whole thing has become rather squat and flat. If you look at the profile curves, um, especially if we go from these angles, you can see that I could lift the whole thing up a bit. Um, and I'm going to do some of that. I'm going to actually lift, turn back on my reference here, I'm going to lift the front three petals. That'll give me a little more elevation there. this pedal up. I want a fairly tight relationship between this pedal and this pedal, so move it up a little bit more. Um, now what that has done um, is it has really distanced um, this petal from uh, the leaf below it, but I think that's okay. I think I might move this one up a little bit. I like that arrangement better. That's a, that's a better feel uh, for a start. Now, what I need to do is I need to create a flow kit for each one of these uh, maquette petals and leaves. So, <clears throat> to do that, um, I need to make a flat representation of that surface. That matches the surface both in uh, size and mathematics, uh, degree of curvature and control point count. I'm going to start with my, I'm going to go back and take a look at my leaf petals because there are two issues to consider when you're modeling. One is how it looks and the other is how you're going to make it um, when all is said and done. And I see these leaves um, being a distinct assembly from the petals above. And there will be, will be some cleaning issues here, but nothing that's untenable. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to start with those. Okay. The easiest way uh, to create a flat surface from a simple surface like these is to simply and let's keep the the yeah that's leaf leaf A okay go back to top C pen I just wanted to make sure I knew which leaf was A B C and D etc so um, I'm going to take that I'm going to come over here to our curve from tools um, and it's going to give me a choice here to um, create UV curves. 
it's going to select ask me to select curves on the surface I'm going to select those and hit enter and that will give me um, my outline and those leaves flat that leaf flat I'm going to move this any closed curve has a center so a closed rectangle or circles or ellipse so I'm going to take that and I'm going to bring it over and I'll just snap it there for now and I'm going to repeat the step now in this case I got something I well oh, yeah it's okay you want to make sure that when you look at these that these make sense directionally because sometimes they're they're reversed and if they're reversed you just mirror them <clears throat> it has to do with the directionality of the surface and how Rhino interprets it and again So now I have a flat representation of each one of these. Need to create a surface now. So I'm going to explode by rail sweep and delete the curves on the outline. Explode by rail sweep, delete the outline. Explode by rail sweep, delete the outline. And explode by rail sweep. Delete the outline. Now I need to make sure the math matches. So for leaf A, um, just hit F5 to check. It's at 7, 9. So before I rebuild it though, I have to make sure that the grain of the surface is the same. The way you check the grain is you do a UV uh, curve, uh, extract ISO curve, I should say, and you just see which direction it's running. On this surface it's running vertically, on this surface it's running horizontally. We need them to match. So I'm going to analyze direction and I'm going to swap UV. Nothing will appear to have changed but it has. Hit enter and then extract ISO curve and you'll see this is now running horizontally. So. Once again, it's going to be built, be rebuilt to 7, 9. When I'm looking at that, um, folks, I'm looking at the number here, not over here. This is what it will rebuild it to if I hit enter. What I want to see is the current numbers, which are right over here, 7, 9, 3, 3. I'm going to cancel out and put those exact numbers in that dialog. Same thing here. Actually check the directionality horizontal, vertical. So, analyze direction, swap UV. I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest of these. Um, if I am dragging a vertical, yeah, it seems to be a pretty consistent thing. So, and one more. Yep, need to swap UV. And then surface count is currently 79 so 79 surface is currently 79 so 79 and I imagine this is the same but I always check 79 79 so now all things being equal um, these should be accurate flow kits. To verify that, oops. Um, I'm going to take the curves.
for some reason here I have some extra curves that I did not mean to have, which means I have curves over on the uh, orange surface that I'm not aware that I have that got carried over. Oh, okay, mystery, fine. I'm happy with mysteries. So, I'm going to take these curves and I'm going to flow along surface. going to match the corner, this corner for this corner. Oh, hang on. This corner for this corner. And you'll see it lands at exactly where it's supposed to be. So it's valid, it works. Okay. So what I need to do now is I need to be able to model um, these leaves flat. So I'm going to take my reference material and I'm going to move it. This is the only reason I use grid snap, folks. The only reason I use grid snap is to align something so that if I want to put it back someday, uh, for example, I want to put this back in the middle, I can do it and it will be in the right place. It's the only reason I ever use grid snap. I've never had a use for it outside of my basic rhino training class in Seattle. Um, I've never never had a use for it. But it is useful for this. It is useful for being able to move things around your your viewport, your scene here, and be able to put them back where they were if you want to. So put that here and lock. And I will start modeling. Now, these leaves are actually fairly high up in the view, so I'm going to go ahead and move this down a little bit. There. So, I'm going to start with this leaf. I only have a, a corner of that leaf to work from, so um, the challenge I'm going to face here really quickly is having enough um, colors to work with, but we'll make do. I need to explode this. I need to, I'm going to use a typical uh, or standard organic modeling uh, procedure here, so um, This hard point is really a no-no for actually modeling something, so come in here and uh, once again split these off and do a blend curve uh, just to give me a rounded tip. So, um, at the end of the day, I'm going to want that to be a single curve. Um, so, to make sure I achieve that, I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to need an odd number of points in order to maintain that roundness. I'll try 35. That's good. It's very dense, but that's fine. Um, turn on the points. I do not want to have take out like the three small points at the end here just because it'll allow me to make sure I get a match and I'll match these curves just to make sure I have a smooth relationship there that's all the redrawing I'm going to need to do with this one I will go ahead and trim off the ends of this curve won't really prove useful in modeling, but it's nice visually to have it handy. 
Okay, I'm going to extrude uh, these straight down. Like so. Actually, no. Before I extrude, I'm going to do a loft. Take a look at that loft. Um, not loving it, so I'm going to go with a bi-rail sweep instead. I want to be able to control the grain of this pretty carefully. So add my slashes. And something like that is fine. I'm going to rebuild the surface. Uh, the 29 points going down it are a little excessive for what I'm doing here. Uh, I can probably get by with 15. Uh, in the V direction, 9 is probably not a bad guess, but I'm going to start with 7. Okay. And then I'll extrude. I'm going to extrude the surface edges. Straight down. The length down doesn't matter a lot. I'll make it way too deep. Because it makes my life easy to do so. I'm going to move this. Um, actually, this, remember the top here is supposed to represent the, that surface. And we want it to be pretty much at the top. So instead of really moving this top surface here, as it were, I'm going to work with the extrusions. I'm going to turn on the control points. Oh, forget. In Rhino, you have to explode an extrusion before you can access its control points. There we go. Um, grab the top two rows here and move them down a little ways. How far is up to me, depending on how much form I think I need in that leaf. For start or something like that. Surface edit tools match. This edge to this edge. I want continuity to be tangency. Uh, this edge to this edge. Tangency once again. I'm going to um, turn on the control points here. Take a look at what I've got. I want to be able to get a little softer roll here, so take that second row up. Like so. Take the middle row oh. and move it down because there is a crease here. But the interesting thing to note is that the crease is not um, where we would think it would be. Uh, the crease in the drawing is here. So. going to realign some control points. I'm going to be using shift and ortho as I move these. to line up the center line. back a little bit. Now 
Now I suspect I am going to want to have more control over this, so I'm going to insert a knot. That is the proper direction, and I want symmetry. And that gives me more control. So I'll come back in and once again rework this a little bit. And I suspect I'm going to want a little more control coming in from this side as well. Now I'm falling away from this, but I really don't want to change too much of how the end of this is. I'm in 3D land now. I'm no longer doing a drawing, and what looks good in a drawing is not necessarily going to be my friend here. So, all right. drop that down. And take a look at what I've got. Not bad. Um, I don't want to drop them all down though. And I want to drop them incrementally. So just a little bit. make sure I'm using ortho, that I don't slide to or fro at all. Okay, that's not bad. I think I want it a little more pronounced here. So I'm going to do a transform 2D scale. This will keep the control points at the same elevation, but bring them in towards that center point, which will give me more of a crease, a sharper crease. Okay, and as I get back in here, where I actually would like that crease to soften, I'll do the reverse. comfortable with that. Okay, if I want to see how that actually looks in place, history. Transform flow along surface. Like so. And that should give me of what that leaf is actually starting to look like. Because of how it's falling off here, I am losing a little bit of thickness there, but I think that's okay. 
I think I would like no no I wouldn't I actually like what's happening I think I'd like a little bit more of a swell through here seeing there is it breaking through the background image come over here and take a look yeah I like that okay um, have a little bit of a concern about what's happening at the back here First off, I don't know why these two dipped down. That really wasn't something I wanted them to do. Um, but I can fix that. I'll grab this one and I'll just project it to seaplane. That'll remove any crease that was there. scale. No change. No change. Slant that down a little bit. Slant that down a little bit. See if I like that better over here. I do. Okay. So. So I know I like what I've got going over there. So now the challenge is to surface the point. Uh, surfacing points is always um, its own uh, concern, if you will. Um, I have a couple of choices as to how to go about this. Um, to extrude this straight down. Catch the corner. Like so. Turn on the... T explode it. Turn on the top row points. And bring them down. Gonna match surface. Tangency. And again, tangency. Going to extract an ISO curve. in this case doesn't feel like it's really at the point so I'm going to just go to near snap instead and put it where I feel like the point actually is and then I'm going to do a adjustable blend curve and I'm going to 
adjust this. To give me the character that I want. I'm going to split this edge. Right at the curve. And do a surface from Curve Network. Edge to a curve, edge rail, and edge rail. See, no, sorry. Edge rail, edge rail, edge rail, edge section. That's actually a curve rail in the middle. And preview it. Fine. Join the two together and let's take an E map, see where we're at. Uh, you'll see we have a buckle um, right here. Uh, that is not unusual under the circumstances. So, um, extract ISO curve. Extract ISO curve, trim, sorry, trim, trim, blend surface. Is my first finished leaf. Remove that extracted ISO curve. Take these lines, group them together, and put them into storage. In case I want them back. surface. That's a pretty believable leaf form. Okay. leaf over. Same process. A nice believable angle there. Split this. Explode what's left. For this, I think I'll just do a blend curve from these two, see what I get.
close enough. And do my by rail sweep. same well this is a little more detail in the shape here but it looks like it's holding it okay so works go ahead and adjust the center line first this time Notice by using the shift key in this case, I'm actually um, kind of going off of the straight line of these control points. You kind of want to keep that straight line, but the only way to do that is to set a C plane or get a guide curve, and that's pretty tedious. So you can either use shift key, which is what I tend to do, or if you want to, you can just eyeball it so that you get a, you get a little bit um, straighter relationship. Go ahead and do my extrusion. Might as well make it the same length as that one. I explode it. Turn on my control points. Grab the top two rows. And move them down. The wider the piece is, usually, um, the farther down you want to come. The narrower it is, uh, the less deep you want to have that for the form. So you can kind of picture the cross sections that these are going to make. doesn't have to be straight like we did with it with the other leaf. If your form asks for a more robust handling, you can do that. So uh, surface edit tools match. Again, just some very basic form uh, things. I would like to have this secondary row come up a little bit so it's not so abrupt. And now, for example, if I've decided I turn on the points on the extrusion um, that I would like.
to have more form, more depth through here, for example. I can drag a window. around those associated control points. It's important to make sure you only select what you want when you're doing this. Actually, I don't want any of those. Okay. And I can move them together. And because you have the straight relationship, the smoothness will continue would be preserved. So that'll give me a little more form through there if that's what I want. Okay. Um, once again, I need to put a crease in this leaf. I feel that this one is a softer sort of effect. So once again, it tapers out a couple points away from the tip. Something I would recommend that your leaves and petals always do. surfacing the point, if you've got a crease in it, is more difficult. It is not impossible. I've done it many times. But it's more difficult. And if it's not really going to help the aesthetics of what you're doing, there's no reason to do that. And it's been my experience that it rarely does anything at all for the aesthetics. So, actually, you get a prettier point on things if it's not creased. So, we've got that. Now, I would like you can see the ISO curve, and it really tells you where the dent is. I'm not getting a lot of control through here. Um, I can move that point over a little, and that'll get it closer. I can move that away a little and that'll get it closer. And it'll pull it. But truthfully, the best way to do it is just to add an isocurve, uh, a knot. again symmetrical and I'll start I'll keep this one a little ways out like that now I can take these points and as I did the last time go to transform 2d scale and as I do that see how that affects the form because I don't want the point to get I don't want the crease to become really bold through here. The crease is actually fading out through there. Important to have the C plane set properly. I was scaling 2D using a front C plane, which was not going to get me what I want. sharper. 
I do want there to be a sharp crease like right through here. So through here I'm going to let those come in rather tight. got that relationship. I'm going to take a couple of these center line points and drop them. And that will give me a well-defined crease through there. what I like to have. Um, actually, I think that that is a reasonable representation. Uh, let's take a look at how it looks when it flows. the edge of this to follow along uh, flow-wise what's happening here. So I'm going to do a blend curve. doesn't really matter what I see here. The biggest point is just to get a curve that comes out close to that surface. I'm going to pull it.
And that way, what I trim this with is going to have some relationship, at least, to the flow coming off of these sides. Match surface. Okay, um, because I trimmed this, um, it's not going to allow me to do that. But since I'm probably going to do a patch in between here or a blended surface, I'm not going to worry about it for now. Uh, extract ISO curve. Extract ISO curve. Blend curve. That looks pretty good. Split edge. For some reason I'm having a hard time seeing split edge. Oh, because I'm on the wrong menu. Okay. Um, make sure I split it right where those curves end. And surface and curve network. Edge rail, curve rail, edge rail, edge section, go. Looks pretty good. Join, join, analyze the seam. And actually, that seam is virtually not there. Uh, that is a seam I'll accept. Just a touch of seam here. is interesting. But once again, I think it's acceptable uh, for the kind of work I'll be doing with this. So, fine. Uh, extrude. Trim. Join. Cap, flow, and flow. out a great deal, but if you look at where it's going to be cut, not much of it's going to carry over. Not much of it at all. Okay. You might ask why I keep undoing that, because these flowed surfaces are dense and memory hogging and if I'm not going to be using them right away, there's no reason to trouble Rhino with their presence. All right, the next surface. Or leaf, I should say.
Kirkland curve. Shift key will give me a symmetrical pole, which I apparently didn't want. surface I really don't need anything near 15 I can get by with probably 10 extrude the surface edges turn on the control points cross-section, which will be the one at the point, the lowest. Here. I'm keeping an eye on the back here. this all the way to the back in this case because the leaf just tucks under. Um, I'm really not going to do that back one certainly. The reason I don't want to move the back one because moving it freehand I'm going to lose that flat line and that flat line allows me to cap that at the back with a planar surface which makes my life easier. And I'm all for easier.
Okay, now I have this swinging over here, and I don't have enough points to do that with. I'll work with what I've got first here. Uh, point of uh, form when you're surface control point modeling. Um, now this is also with mesh modeling. You do not increase the intensity of your surface, the density of your surface, until you have to. Do as much as you can with your nice low point, point count surface. And then if you need to, um, you add, and I do need to, so. Um, Side, it got me distracted. Um, I'm going to want symmetrical. I'm going to want to keep these fairly tight this time, uh, and then I want to go in the other direction. I do not want symmetrical in this case. Um, I need to add a row of points. I'm going to add a couple of them somewhere in there. This will allow me. that flow coming out of there. Because to the designer, apparently, this was important. That that move over in that way. And it doesn't take me a lot of effort to replicate that, so I may as well. Okay. Match surface. Turn on points. Grab those rows. Move them up. symmetrical, especially with organic modeling. If I can be in my control point movements, it just makes my life a little easier, but it, it's not necessary at all, or really desirable. Okay, I know that I'm going to want all of these to drop. I don't want to crease at the back. There's no reason for it, and it's going to make my life difficult. It's not even going to be visible in the model. So, Down a little bit. Take the ends off. Actually, I'm going to leave... Okay, I'll take that end off. something fairly assertive going there. Now this time I'm not doing a 3D scale, a uh, 2D scale, I'm doing a 3D scale. Gives you a different effect kind of collapses that down. I don't want to like the way it's looking on this one though. So, back to 2D scale. And it's still 3D scaled. Okay. Same here. Less so, because we're coming out of it. Oh, <laughs> okay. 
control point, uh, seaplane control guys, sorry. Uh, it even happens to me once in a while. I was wondering why those points were dropping. Because I had the front seaplane active. All transforms are seaplane dependent, don't forget that. tight crease on this one. And I'll let it fade out. Now, if I think that is too much, which I kind of do, can bring those down and you see what it does to that cross section. Okay. So that gives me something pretty nice. I'd like to have more swell. In through here. So I'm going to move these points over so I get them in the position that I want them. aware of the kind of zigzag and grain I have going. If there's something really um, graphic, it'll show. Turn on my flat shading again because it'll help me see those things before they become a problem. And raise it up. see that the surface is struggling through here a little bit. So I like that. I think that's good. Check it. doing with this other leaf, of course, is not working well at all. And I think I've got this a little too tight how it's coming out of the end. So, the tightness is easy to get rid of. scale on the top seaplane and this will release out a bit. So that was easy to do. Um, 
And actually, what I think I like is I think I like it coming in hard on this side. But falling out softer. Remember your seaplanes, guys, because I have top seaplane active, when I move these points out, they do not go up and down. They just go side to side. It's important to always keep in mind what's happening. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so flow it again, this time with history. So that looks better, but now I have that issue. Um, because I have history attached. I can just move this down. This is that flexibility I spoke about at the beginning of the video. choice. <laughs> There's always several ways to do this. I can also go blend surface. The challenge with this is that I'm going to need to have two viewports active. I really don't like to do. Yeah, yeah, this just becomes a little problematic. So what I'm going to try and do is just accept what it's given me. Turn on its control points. That'll be the easiest way to handle it. Grab those whole rows. Can't mess with these because they're controlling the tangency, but I can move these. As long as I drag a selection that selects that row of points from top to bottom, I'm okay. There. I think that is certainly successful and good enough. Um, Extract ISO curve. Extract ISO curve. Adjustable blend curve. Split the surface. I should say the edge. Surface and curve network. Edge rail, curve rail, edge rail, edge section. It's all 
whole lot going on in a very small space. But it doesn't look poisonous. Necessarily. It doesn't look great. Um, let's see what we've got. Might as well join it to the bottom while we're at it. Take out flat shading. See, I'm getting a bullet nose here, which I, it's really blunt, and I don't care for that. And one of the annoying things about me as a rhino modeler is I don't, I don't cooperate, generally speaking. So, how to make that go away. The radial surface right here, and, and there's just a bump. There's an evil little bump that I don't care for. splitting the edge there, by the way, so that I wouldn't have to contend with that. I'm going to back off how hard it pulls off of this edge. See if that does anything. Surface and Curve Network. Edge rail, curve rail, edge rail, edge section, go. It really wants to have um, this bulge right here. Which is simply not acceptable to me. So, undo split edge. Going to have to take this a little bit um, different tack. if I could have made that a symmetrical decision right there. But it's not going to allow me. So I'm going to come up to about here. Go into my front seat plane, select my object, and get a cutting plane going straight across. Get an intersection between those two. Throw away the cutting plane. Throw away the ISO curve that I pulled to position that. And I'm going to do a um, actually I don't want to throw away this yet. I'm going to do an intersection between these two as well. So I know where this plane intersects my surface and my curve here, my cross-section. Um, I do want this to have a straight, a rounded effect here. So I will pull a curve with ortho straight to one side. instead. Here and here. And now I need 
split this curve, which is now a cross section, here. Surface and curve network. Edge rail, curve rail, edge section, curve section, edge section. So that gives me control through here. So I have a choice here. I can try patch, which would be the easiest thing to do. But it is not going to give me anything nice. So I'll do what I was doing before, except for now I will split the edge of this surface and do a three-sided uh, surface curve network. Edge rail, curve rail, edge rail, edge section, go. Join. fight um, from the surfacing uh, through that area, which is really unfortunate. You can actually see it when the ISO curves start to kick like that. You know you've got a bit of a problem to deal with. Okay, so I don't like what that's doing. What can I do about it? Extract ISO curve. Here. Here. best-looking little cross-section I've ever come up with. Don't care for it. Cutting plane. Intersection. I like that better. Need to unsplit those edges, merge edge. Merge edge. And I'm going to split this edge here and here now. So now I can do a surface doing this direction and hope for the best. Curve, oh, hang on. So, double check that edge. Okay, looks good. So, Curve rail, edge rail, 
edge section, curve section, edge section. might actually work for us. Yes. Except for, this is going to be a very strange uh, bi rail sweep.
And once again, I am not going to prefer to carry this all the way out the back. I'm going to take a look and see exactly how far down I can see that. Um, it disappears about here, so underneath that other pedal, so I don't have to go too crazy with it. I'll start backing it off here. curve to play along to go where I want it to go if I can and of course the more extreme the modeling or you know the more extreme the movement is you know the farther I have to take it the less likely I'm going to be able to get a, an easy solution so um, okay, so this is really not acceptable how distorted it became over here. Um, so, I'm going to back those out and go ahead and put my knot in. is after you do this is simply that the grain of the surface makes sense with what it is that you're trying to model, um, which is not a bad thing. I'm going to want to have a control point over in here so I can have some fullness up through there. So that's good. Extrude my edges. Something is happening too harsh or too quick. And then down at this end, 
obviously we need to bring those back up as well. Just something that makes sense as a cross-section deck back here. Again, the big movements that I made that looked good down here became too boxy at the, at, the, at the more shallow ends of things. This is okay in the back. All right, so now I'm going to drop that um, center.
so that portion I'm liking. is what happened what's happening is between me putting some sophistication into the form here with control point editing and with the control and with the uh, flow surfaces having form to them the bigger broader forms um, I can get very sophisticated looking objects without too much work. I mean, this is work, but when you consider each one of these leaves could be an earring, and when you when you work as a contractor class, it's very important that you consider that. I always build by the feature. Um, each one of these could be a piece of jewelry, so this is not a fast project to do, obviously. Let's see how close we've come. Okay, not so great, but okay, we'll try the same thing we did last time. We'll try adjusting the two outer points and see if we can come up with something that's a good compromise. Yeah, that looks alright. A extract ISO curve.
If I really want to know how this would land on this, I can actually go curve, extend by line, explode that, take this end curve off, go to top C plane, and project it. And that'll actually put that curve exactly in line with that if I want to do that. section go. That might be okay. Our, um, our leaves. There is an interesting um, artifact taking place right here that I don't really understand. Okay, it's just an artifact in the renderer. It's not in the surface, so. Um, so there we go. Um, uh, that finishes up the leaves. This would be the same process that I will do uh, for the petals of the flower, and then I would need to come up with an assembly uh, 
system, which I would envision being two rings, actually. I would crop the center out here with a, with a metal ring. There'd be a metal ring on the pedals, and I would solder the two rings together uh, with a center post, which would be the center element. And that would allow me to clean and position and clean and position both pieces. Of course, I've got to cut the back sheet off. I use a back sheet to clip it off in the back um, in a graceful way. But at least that shows you the... Um, organic modeling aspect of it. I hope you found this useful and uh, thanks for watching.